tales for dark nights. Want to make sure you never miss a Chilling Tales for Dark Nights video again? Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell to turn on notifications. And we're back. What's going on, friend? Pleased to have you back as always. I like our little arrangement. I keep talking and you keep showing up. We've got a real thing going, if you ask me. Oh, that's right, Chester. I almost forgot about Bastille Day. Bonne fête nationale! <laughs> sorry, sorry. I don't know how many Frenchmen join us here, but that was pretty cool when you stormed the Bastille and Rush wrote a song about it. 1789 was a big year for them. The French, not Rush. But forget foreign affairs. Come on in, friend. Hmm. All right. Nice, natural smoke, full of vitamins and minerals. Man, it's a good thing they banned those jewel pods. Those things are just plain unhealthy. Ooh, good old government. Always looking out for our health. You can still get jewels in France, though. Those guys spread butter on their cigarettes. No fucks given. So vape them if you've got them and drink those glasses to the bottom because old Drew Blood has a tell to tell. But Beth Phils, Zill Rig on that roller. <laughs> You're listening to the standard edition of this program. If you'd like to show your support and enjoy ad free versions of this and all our other episodes, visit simplyscarypodcast.com and click Patrons in the upper menu to sign up today. You'll get instant access to the whole enchilada, including hundreds of tales from our audio archives dating back to 2012. Thank you for your support. Got a story or two you'd like to hear on this show? Send it to DrewBloodHorror at gmail.com. If selected, we'll do business. In tonight's tale, we join Mike Flint, an ex-military man trying to draw disability from the VA. But sometimes faking a back injury is more painful than the real deal. So, without further delay, I give you from author Brian Asbury, White Coat Syndrome. Mike Flint's eyes lit up like Christmas lights as he counted the money in the cash register till at his booth. He operated a petting zoo on his property that was a popular attraction for the locals as well as out-of-towners. He usually always operated understaffed and today was no different. The few employees that had worked for him either ended up quitting because of the poor working conditions or after being shorted on their paycheck and enduring a loud profanity-filled tirade when he was confronted about it. Hold on, he said sternly as he counted out the money one of the people in line had slipped onto the counter. Admission is thirty dollars. He shook the wadded up bills in the air. You only gave me twenty. The man looked at the prices that were displayed on the board behind where Mike sat. Your sign says children under five are free. Our daughter is four. Mike raised up out of his seat and peered over the counter at the little girl. You got any proof? The man got an upset look on his face. Well, no. She's a child. She's not even in school yet. With all due respect, folks, this isn't a carnival. And I'm not the guy that guesses people's age and weight. If I took everyone's word that said their kid was under five, I'd be out of business. The man looked at his wife, then huffed and pulled out a $10 bill, throwing it on the counter. Come on. He tugged at his wife's hand and stormed away. Just past Mike's driveway, off the interstate, a faded billboard read, Rock Ridge Petting Zoo, humanely caring for animals privately since 2010. But despite the wholesome write-up and colorful pictures of animals playing together in a meadow, there was nothing humane about the place. Mike walked slowly through the pens, monitoring operations. Brandon, get that llama up! He barked. The young man jumped. 
Jen goes sick. He, he doesn't have the strength. Mike sighed and grabbed a stun gun out of a rusted out wall locker that was covered in excrement. He ain't sick. He just needs a little motivation. He smiled mischievously and pushed a button on the side of the stun gun. The electrodes crackled and popped menacingly. The llama put his ears back and struggled to his feet. That's better. The smile left Mike's face and he quickly hid the stun gun in his camo vest as he walked away. Mike sat quietly in an exam room as his doctor looked over his MRI. Your L4 and L5 look good. Some mild herniation, but nothing uncommon for someone who's in their mid-forties, the doctor said with a puzzled look on his face. Mike slapped his knee. So how does mild herniation account for the extreme pain I have in my lower back? The doctor turned away from his computer screen and looked at Mike. So this pain began shortly after you discharged from the military, correct? Correct. And the VA couldn't determine the cause of pain, correct? Yes. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever had an onset of pain during any of your office visits here? Not really. How about during any of your sessions with your chiropractor or physical therapist? No. Like I've been saying, the pain's always there. The doctor paused. Have you ever heard the term white coat syndrome? Mike thought about it for a minute. Isn't that when your blood pressure goes up in a doctor's office or something? Exactly. It's a medical term that refers to a slight elevation in a patient's blood pressure when they're at a doctor's office. It's thought to be related to the anxiety that some people experience when they go to the doctor. Now, it's usually used when referring to blood pressure, but not always. Sometimes things like chronic pain can be triggered by anxiety as well. Mike smiled contemptuously. I don't have any anxiety, Doc. You don't believe me, do you? It's not that I don't believe you. It's just that in the medical field, we're taught to explore all possible variables when dealing with a difficult or obscure diagnosis. It's not anxiety, and it's not all in my head. You're starting to sound just like the VA now. You said you run a petting zoo, right? Yay. I'm sure that has to be a pretty physically demanding job at times. I have employees that handle the grunt work around the zoo. The doctor tapped his pen on his clipboard. I see. Well, Mike, like I said, I just have a protocol to follow. The doctor sighed. I think your case may be well out of my scope. Your radiology report, the x-rays and MRIs all came back fairly normal. The last resort would be to refer you to a spinal surgeon, but, as enthusiastic as some are, they're not going to want to touch you with findings like this. Mike stood up and limped toward the door. Well, thanks for the empathy, he said sarcastically. Mike, the doctor uttered. Mike turned to him as he grabbed the door handle. I really do hope you get some answers. The doctor peered through the blinds as Mike stormed through the parking lot to his truck. He noticed that his limp seemed to have disappeared and he casually ripped off the back brace that he was wearing and threw it onto the seat. If I can just get one of these damn doctors to sign off on my disability claim, Mike said hopelessly as his breath barreled from his mouth into the frigid morning air. His friend, Don Castanos, leaned on the railing of one of the animal pens as the two men spoke. Still got that back pain, huh? Sure, Mike said as he grinned smugly and took a sip of coffee. I may exaggerate a little bit, but so what? Half these doctors don't know shit. Isn't that fraud? Don asked. Mike's eyes got big. I served my country for twelve years, stationed overseas in a giant sandbox. I gave them twelve years. Now, as far as I'm concerned, they're gonna give me something. Mike sighed. <sighs> fraud. Me defending this country, protecting half these deadbeats that collect a check for sitting on their asses in fraud. As far as I'm concerned, that makes me the victim of fraud. Don shrugged his shoulders. Uh, well, I hear that. Got a brother-in-law like that. Doesn't do shit. He gets a check each month for his supposed anxiety. Then get this. He gets his medical marijuana card and claims it caused him to become addicted. 
Now he draws disability for that, too. Don shook his head. The guy should work at the Social Security office with his knowledge of that bullshit. That's terrible, Mike said. There was a long pause. Then he looked over at Don. You, uh, by chance have his number? That evening, Mike sat propped up in bed, his eyes fixated on his phone screen as he scrolled up and down with his finger. He curiously stopped at a listing he found on his search engine. Denison Law, fighting hard to get military veterans the disability benefits that they deserve. The next morning, Mike sat at his dining room table and eagerly dialed the firm's number. He was greeted by an automated message. Hello. And thank you for calling Denison Law, Veterans Law Attorneys. We want to thank you for your service and now look forward to serving you. You're damned right, Mike uttered. A high-pitched voice then came on the line. Denison Law, this is Lindsay. How may I help you? Yeah, I need to set up an appointment with one of your lawyers. No problem. And who do I have the pleasure of speaking with? This is Michael Flint. And is this related to VA benefits? Absolutely. You see, I'm being denied my disability benefits by the VA. I'm sorry to hear that, Mr. Flint, but you've definitely called the right place. I just need a little information and we can get you scheduled in for a free consultation. Great, Mike said enthusiastically. Brandon, start digging out the feed pit. Mike tossed Brandon a flathead shovel and began cleaning dirt and rotten food from where the hogs were fed. One of the hogs showed a keen interest in what the two men were doing by rooting through the freshly turned debris with its snout. Mike tried to shove him out of the way, but it didn't have much effect on the fully grown 500-pound beast. Son of a bitch! Mike shouted. He then lifted his shovel in the air and winded up. He swung at the hog, striking him in his side, which caused him to squeal and dart off. Brandon threw his shovel down. Listen, man, if you're going to keep treating these animals like that, then I'm out. Mike threw his shovel down and got up in the young man's face. He pulled his stun gun from his vest. What the fuck are you going to do, huh? Brandon's body was tensed up, and he stood there breathing heavily and clenching his fists. After a few seconds, he finally flinched and stormed away. Fuck you, he exclaimed. A few days later, Mike showed up at the law office. He climbed a flight of cement steps that led to a large wooden double door. Above the doors was a gold plaque of the Lady Justice, hanging in an official manner. Mike steadied himself with a cane as he approached the receptionist. Hi, I had a two o'clock appointment with one of your attorneys. The woman glanced down at her computer screen. Michael? Yes. Okay. Gavin will be with you shortly if you just want to have a seat. After a few minutes, a man in a dress shirt and tie greeted Mike in the lobby. Mike! Yes, Mike said as he appeared to struggle getting up from his chair. I'm Gavin Russell. How are you? Uh, I've been better, Mike responded. Well, maybe we can help with that. Follow me into my office. Gavin pulled Mike out of the chair. Please have a seat. So, what brings you in today, Mr. Flint? About 14 years ago, I discharged from the military. Since that time, I've dealt with excruciating pain in my lower back. I've seen two separate VA doctors, as well as my family doctor, and they all keep giving me the runaround. None of them can seem to diagnose the cause of my pain. Hell, they don't even seem like they want to acknowledge that I even have pain. Well, first of all, thank you for your service. As you may know, we here at Denison Law specialize in litigating on the behalf of veterans like yourself, exploited by the same country they serve so selflessly. Gavin spoke in a polished, monotone voice. Now, has this pain left you unable to work? I worked for the highway department for about ten years. Now I run a petting zoo that's located on my property. But yes, unfortunately, if I wasn't self-employed, there'd be no way I could ever hold down any kind of full-time job. I like to help out the community, and I employ some of the local neighborhood kids to help me out around the farm. They have to do the shoveling and lifting stuff. 
Well, I'm sorry to hear what you've been reduced to, Mr. Flynn, but I'm glad you reached out to us. So many good people like yourself get lost in the cracks of government bureaucracy. Gavin shook his head empathetically. It makes me sick. It seems to me that you've come here today looking for some honest representation. So I would be willing to take on your case. Now, we don't require any money up front. We work on a contingency basis. Meaning we would collect 25% of your past due benefits if we win your case. Hallelujah! Mike exclaimed. Where do I sign? It's about time I started getting somewhere. Well, I don't like giving clients false hope but we do have an excellent track record for making the VA pay. I have a few documents that you need to sign, then we'll get you scheduled for an in-office visit from a credible private doctor for a second opinion. We have several that we highly recommend. The weekend came, and it was the annual Rock Ridge Pet and Zoo barbecue. Mike would slaughter some of the animals, and attendees could purchase food as they walked through the zoo. Grab you a bite to eat. It's like the Red Lobster of Livestock, he yelled toward the crowd as they looked over the menu that was handwritten on a dry erase board. A small boy and his father walked up to Mike. The boy had a serious look on his face. Do you kill these animals? Oh, no, son, of course not. The meat is special meat that grows on a vine like a tomato. You ever petted a tomato before? The boy smiled and shook his head. His father laughed and playfully ruffled his hair. Another man approached Mike as he operated his smoker. I think this meat is bad or something. Oh no, that was just butchered this week. See, you're used to eating that processed crap. There ain't no growth hormones or antibiotics in this stuff. The man reluctantly took another bite, then spit it back out. No, that's bad, mister. He set the styrofoam container on the counter. I think I want a refund. There ain't no refunds. And there ain't nothing wrong with that meat, Mike snapped. But the truth was, there was something wrong. Something sour that couldn't be hidden with any amount of spice. A cooler had went out a few days earlier, and instead of throwing away the meat that had been stored in there, Mike threw it on the grill and served it up. Pretty soon, several other customers began to complain as well. Mike threw off his apron. That's it. Zoo is closed. The customers began to look around at one another. Get out. Heckles could be heard from all around. We want a refund then, a woman cried out. Didn't you hear me? There ain't no damned refunds. Now get out of here. Don Castano sat his beard down and looked around as the angry crowd of people grew. He did his best to help Mike escort everyone out the gates. I'm through, Mike sulked. Ah, oh, shit, you ain't through. You've been here for what, over ten years now? Don replied as he helped Mike pick up trash off the ground. If this lawyer wins my case, I might just sell this shithole and move back to Kentucky. You ever seen the cost of living out there? Don shook his head. Hell of a lot cheaper than here. You don't have all those damn liberals raising taxes. Mike's phone rang early the next morning, waking him from a dead sleep. Uh, hello. Hello, Mr. Flint. Yes? Hi, this is Michelle from Dr. Vickers' office. I'm calling you today to get you scheduled for a video visit. Okay. But wait, uh, he doesn't do it in person? Mike rubbed his eyes. No, unfortunately, due to the sheer number of patients Dr. Vickers cares for, he's gone strictly virtual. Will tomorrow at one o'clock work for you? Yeah, one o'clock should work. The following day, Mike fumbled through the webcam setting on his laptop. It has to be video. Can't just be in person, he muttered to himself. All of a sudden, the doctor's image appeared on his screen. Hello? Can you hear me? The doctor asked. Yes, Mike said, startled. Hello, I'm Dr. Vickers. I understand that our friends over at Denison Law referred you to us for a second opinion. Dr. Vickers looked down at his notes. On a lower back injury that occurred as a result of your military service? Tell me about that. Well, about 14 years ago, I discharged from the Army, and ever since, I've been living with this terrible lower back pain. Dr. Vickers smiled. 
Which branch? Infantry, Mike replied. I was Army Nurse Corps. Did four years and got out in 93. So, I reviewed your imaging, and from what I can see, it looks inconclusive. I'm gonna pull up your MRI so we can review it together, and I'll show you what I mean. Pretty soon, a box with Mike's MRI images appeared on the bottom left corner of the screen. There's a few areas around your disc right here. He took his cursor and zoomed in. And right here, that should appear real bright, but look a little faded. I want to stress the term inconclusive, because I'm a doctor, not a spine surgeon. It's no different than if I was to try to diagnose something like a chronic eye condition. I wouldn't do that. I'd refer you to an ophthalmologist. My job is to determine if there's a need for further investigation, and I believe, Mr. Flint, that there is. Mike shook his head agreeably. Well, that's the best news I've heard in some time. So what I'm gonna do is have Michelle schedule you in with Dr. Basu. He's an orthopedic surgeon that gets glowing reviews from many of our patients. Did you have any questions for me? Mike thought about it for a minute, then slapped his hands together. Nope. I'm just ready to win my case and try to somehow move on. Michelle should be in touch with you by the end of the day. And if you think of anything or have any questions, let us know. Mike's screen then went black as the session ended. The next two weeks passed as slow as cold molasses. But the morning of his appointment with Dr. Basu, Mike was nervous. He wasn't normally ever nervous before a doctor visit but he pulled in the parking lot with a knot the size of New Jersey in his stomach. The cold air nipped at his skin as he put on his back brace and grabbed his cane. He trudged up the sidewalk towards a large brick building that stood ominously in the distance. Once inside, though, it proved to be a welcome contrast. The sound of crashing water from the indoor waterfall echoed through the lobby. Mike walked up to it and stuck out his cane, letting the water hit it as he smiled somewhat amused. The receptionist directed him to the exam room. If you walk up the stairs, Dr. Basu will be the first door. You can't miss it. She glanced down at his cane. Actually, you may want to use the elevator. It's just around the corner next to the restrooms. A man wearing a white coat and scrubs passed Mike in the hallway, then stopped and turned around. Hello, Michael? Yes. Are you Dr. Basu? Yes. He reached out graciously to shake Mike's hand. Please come right this way. Mike followed him to a room a few doors down. Are you able to get on the exam table? Dr. Basu asked. Mike nodded but made sure to wince as he sat down. I hope it wasn't too much trouble finding my office. Mike grinned. The search party found me. Dr. Basu laughed. Well, unfortunately it's not all mine. There's about six of us that share the building, so it's pretty spread out. The doctor then asked Mike questions about his health while he typed at his laptop. He then turned away from the screen and had Mike perform several tests that assessed his range of motion. Now, bend it to waist, he commanded. Mike gritted his teeth and awkwardly lowered and raised his torso as he kept an eye on the doctor to see if he was buying the act. Okay, I want you to walk towards the door and back. Mike grabbed his cane and hobbled towards the door. Are you always in much pain? the doctor asked. Mike shook his head glumly. Next, the doctor pulled up Mike's MRI. So Dr. Vickers had a few areas of concern on your L4 and L5 vertebra. If you look right here, he pointed at the screen with his ballpoint pen, you'll see these dull patches. That's not good. But what is interesting is the disc density still looks adequate. So we need to investigate what these dull patches are, and if they're the cause of the pain you seem to be having. Mike cleared his throat. <coughs> so, uh, what do you suggest? Well, Mr. Flint, we have exhausted all conventional means of medical imaging. What we, and by we I mean surgeons, would typically do in a situation like this would be to perform an exploratory surgery. This would enable us to see firsthand what we are dealing with. Mike's eyes got big. 
Well, isn't there any other way? I mean, can't you just take more x-rays or something? You'll have two different sets of MRIs and three different sets of x-rays in your file. None of them can clearly account for the pain you're experiencing. This degeneration is minimal, so I can theorize that maybe it's just scar tissue. But sometimes the only way to know for sure what's going on in the body is to open it up and look. Mike's eyes nervously looked around the room as he tried to think of an excuse. Maybe take some time to think it over. The good news is it's a minimal invasive surgery. We make a tiny incision and insert a camera to take pictures. Recovery is relatively quick and the risk of complications is much lower than with traditional open surgery. When you see what's going on inside there, will, uh, will that finally be enough evidence for my case? Mike said with a look of concern on his face. Dr. Basu smiled compassionately. Identifying the cause of your pain will not only help me to make a recommendation, but it will also enable me to develop a course of action to get you out of that pain. Mike shook his head. Okay, that's what I gotta do then. You're sure? the doctor asked. Yeah, Mike replied stone-faced. Okay, we would get you scheduled. Hi, Mr. Flint. I just have a few forms for you to fill out before you leave, the receptionist said gleefully. She then slammed down a thick packet of papers onto the counter. Mike looked at the first page. That's front and back, she said, still smiling. You're having a back surgery, Don Castano said flabbergasted. It's a minor surgery. They just need to have enough evidence to build my case since the VA fucked me over. And I guess if it comes down to putting a hole in my back, then that's what it takes. Don raised his eyebrow. Mike gestured with his hand. Listen, this guy is like the best in the region. I mean, he's Indian for Christ's sake. All the best surgeons are either Asian or Indian, right? Plus, he assured me that there's very little risk. What's gonna happen with the zoo in the meantime? Mike smiled. Well, buddy, that's what I wanted to ask you about. Would you mind tending to the animals until I'm back on my feet? Don thought about it for a minute. Yeah, I could drop by after work. What happened to the kids you had working for you? Fuck that kid. He tried to get squirrely, and I think the little bastard was stealing from me anyway. The sound of the heart monitor beeped unnervingly as Mike laid face down on the operating room table with his head smashed into his pillow. Okay, Mr. Flint, just relax. I'm going to administer some anesthesia through your IV. A female voice said softly. Now do me a favor and count to ten for me. One... Two, three. Mike's eyes slowly closed as he lost consciousness. Dr. Basu examined Mike's back. He steadied his hand and made a small incision with his scalpel, then switched to an electric cauterizer. Smoke rose from the wound as he burned through the layers of tissue. The doctor then ran a small tubular camera into the opening as his nurse assisted him. The video feed appeared on the monitor that was fixed on the wall. Dr. Basu carefully guided the camera through a complex maze of tendons and ligaments, then grinned confidently. Right there. I knew it. Scar tissue. He took some still frames of the area. It's not a lot, but it'll work. When Mike awoke, he was groggy and his mouth was bone dry. Uh, nurse, can I get some ice chips? He called out. Dr. Basu walked in behind the nurse. How are you feeling? Mike laughed. <laughs> Is that a rhetorical question? The doctor smiled. Well, I have some good news. Those spots that were in question were indeed scar tissue. I had a feeling, but I just needed evidence. Mike smiled wide-eyed. Does this mean? I will submit my findings to your attorney along with a statement supporting your claim that this condition has left you unable to work. Mike reached out to high-five the doctor, then grimaced in pain as he tugged at his stitches. Oh, easy, my friend. You'll be discharged by tonight, 
but you need to take it easy for the next few weeks. After about six weeks, you should be fully healed, and then we can discuss removing those adhesions. Mike's forehead wrinkled as he looked in his bathroom mirror at the wound on his back. He used a long cotton swab to apply the ointment the doctor prescribed, then covered it with a bandage. After a few days of sitting around the house watching TV, boredom crept in. Mike had lost almost a week's worth of income and stared longingly through the window at the animal pens. A short time later, he strapped on his coveralls and lumbered outside to do some chores. You open? A man in an SUV yelled out as he pulled off onto the side of the road. Mike waved him in as he opened the gates. He sat down at his booth and let out a heavy gasp in exhaustion. That night, as he changed his dressing, he noticed that his wound had turned from a light pink color to a deeper red. He could feel the warmth as he felt around the edges with his finger. As word spread of the zoo reopening, business picked up, but because of the neglect over the prior weeks, conditions had gotten even worse. Hey, you got a goat with maggots on its leg, a man said excitedly as he pointed towards the goat pen. Mike threw off his glasses and hobbled down from his booth. He looked at the goat's leg, which was covered in dried blood and infested with maggots. Son of a bitch, he whispered under his breath. What's wrong with that goat? A little girl asked her mother innocently. Her mother shielded her face and tried to distract her with some cotton candy. Mike grabbed a leash from a plastic storage bin and placed it around the goat's neck, then led him away from the crowd of people. He grabbed his garden hose and sprayed out the wound as the goat <laughs> cried out. Good as new, he said with an evil grin. Another dressing change. Mike slowly peeled back his bandage and was alarmed to see that the redness had increased and pus now drained from the center of his wound. Shit, he said distraughtly. The next day he laid face down on an exam table at the urgent care center. The doctor, seeing him, put on his gloves and carefully removed his bandage. Well, you definitely have an infection, and a pretty nasty one at that, he said as he squinted his eyes to get a better look. I'm going to irrigate the wound and apply another dressing. I'll write you a prescription for an antibiotic that should help clear it up. How did it get infected? I did everything the doctor told me to. The urgent care doctor thought about it for a minute. Sometimes wounds can be tricky. Have you been resting so that it can heal? Well, I'm self-employed, so rest doesn't exactly pay the bills. Oh, well, what do you do? I run a petting zoo. A petting zoo? Well, I don't mean to alarm you, but you know those types of environments are breeding grounds for E. coli and other types of pathogens. The doctor paused. There's a chance that's how your wound got infected. The doctor pressed on the incision with a gauze pad, causing Mike to grit his teeth. Listen, rest. It's better to lose a little money than to put your health at risk. But despite the doctor's warning, Mike continued to operate the zoo. One day, while feeding his goats, he heard a car horn in the distance. Mike threw his bucket down and walked to his front gate. We're closed, he hollered. Mr. Flint, I'm Dennis Riley. I'm with the Rock Ridge Animal Control. Okay, Mike said blankly. We've received some reports of animal neglect, so I just need to check on the well-being of the animals in your zoo here. Mike paused briefly, then laughed. Huh, neglect? If only me and you had it as good as these animals in here. They love it here. I'm sure, but I just need to verify that for myself, sir. The smile left Mike's face. Not without a woman, you ain't. You guys have tried this before. Mr. Riley pulled a piece of paper out of his folder. I have one right here if you'd like to look at it. Mike snatched it out of his hand and glanced it over. He gave it back, then furiously swung open the gate. Have it your way. Walking through the pens, the areas that were off limits to the public, Mr. Riley saw the horrors that occurred behind the scenes. Chickens that were pecked to death. 
several donkeys that were so malnourished that their bones showed through their hide. Huddled in the corner timidly was the goat that had maggots on its leg. The hair had fallen out and it had turned black from gangrene. Mike stood about 30 feet from Mr. Riley and paced nervously. I'd been treating that infection on that goat. It's a tough case. This animal... Actually, many of these animals need to be seen by a veterinarian. These conditions are shocking, Mr. Flint, and maybe even criminal. Animal control will be seizing the ones that I suspect of being neglected and abused. Mike walked up to Mr. Riley, glaring at him as he began writing up his notice of impoundment. What's that in your pocket? Mr. Riley asked as he happened to notice the stun gun sticking out of Mike's vest. Mike tucked it back in. I've been dealing with some unruly customers recently. I guess you could say it's protection from those individuals that wish harm on me and my livelihood, Mike said slowly, never breaking eye contact with Mr. Riley. I see. It wouldn't be to torment these animals with, would it? It wouldn't have been what caused these burn marks on your llama? I have no idea what you're talking about. Mike shook his finger at Mr. Riley. You know that's a hell of a way to treat a veteran. Your military service has nothing to do with this atrocity. Mr. Riley handed Mike his notice. We'll be back for the animals in question tomorrow. Mike stood fuming as Mr. Riley walked away. The next morning, an 18-wheeler pulled onto the property and several men began loading some of the animals into the trailer. Mike hopped out of bed, but immediately doubled over in pain. He grabbed his lower back and could feel a dampness. He went to the bathroom mirror and could see the bandage was soaked with blood and pus. He ripped it off and painfully wobbled to his front door flinging it open and almost ripping it off the hinges. You motherfuckers! He yelled as he hurled the soiled dressing at the men. A few minutes later, Mike staggered outside towards his truck, dragging his feet on the ground and kicking up dust behind him. He screamed like a maniac, shifted into drive and mashed the pedal down. One of the men threw down a hen he was holding and dove out of the way as Mike narrowly missed mowing him over. His truck began to fishtail as he turned onto the interstate. He tried to gain control but sped off the road, catapulting into some brush. Sirens broke the silence in an otherwise quiet stretch of road. Paramedics loaded Mike into the back of an ambulance as they worked to stabilize him. He awoke disoriented sometime later in the ER with a back brace on. What's wrong with my legs? Why can't I feel my legs? The nurse came in to tend to him. Mr. Flint. Mike tried to jerk out his IV. Mr. Flint, you have to relax. You were in a car accident. <laughs> Why can't I feel my legs? We're trying to figure that out, but in the meantime, you have to calm down. The doctor should be in in a bit to go over things with you. Later in the day, the ER doctor came in and woke Mike, who had laid sleeping. Mr. Flint? The doctor gently nudged Mike to wake him. I'm Dr. Peters. Why can't I feel my legs? Mike again cried out. Well, from what we can tell, it wasn't the car accident that caused your paralysis. When we began to work on you, we noticed that you had a badly infected wound on your lower back. It looks like it was an incision from a procedure that you had recently. My guess is the infection spread to your spinal canal, damaging the nerves that control motor function in your lower limbs. An infection that bad can cause all sorts of things. Hallucinations, loss of consciousness, which would have led to your car accident. A tear began to roll down Mike's eye as he laid there motionless, listening to the news. We have you hooked up to an IV antibiotic drip to get that infection under control. The doctor sighed heavily. You're lucky to be alive. Six months later, a for sale sign stood in front of the entrance gate to the zoo. Mike wheeled himself around his property in a wheelchair as he showed it to a potential buyer. It's a lovely place you got here. 
I live up in Silver Creek, and I too have a lot of animals, so this setup would work well for me. Do you mind me asking why you're selling this place? Mike chuckled self-deprecatingly as he tried to restrain his bitterness. <laughs> well, I got a settlement from the VA after a botched routine surgery. Routine my ass, he motioned to his wheelchair, and I have this to deal with now. The man nodded. I can see that. I'm sorry. He paused for a moment and looked around, then went to shake Mike's hand. Well, I need to discuss it with my wife first, of course. I'll let you know if we decide to make an offer. After the man drove off, Mike grabbed a bucket and began spreading bird feed for his ducks. He then slowly wheeled himself towards the hog pen as they huddled together and watched him from the edge of their feeding pit. When he threw out their slop, they chaotically rushed toward the food, bumping and backing into his wheelchair as they ate. He swung his bucket at them wildly and reached for his stun gun. Watch out, you sons of bitches! He tried to turn around, but ended up rolling backwards and tipping over into the pit. His stun gun went flying into the air and landed just out of reach. Fuck! He yelled frantically. You motherfuckers are gonna pay for this. He tried to pick up his wheelchair, but he didn't have the strength. He laid there, covered in mud and manure. After struggling on the ground for a few minutes, he felt a tugging on his leg. He looked down and saw one of the young pigs biting at his foot. Get away! He tried repeatedly to kick at him, but his legs wouldn't move. He grabbed a dirt clod and threw it at the animal, causing him to back away. Soon, some of the other hogs began to join in, seeming to sense the fear. One nipped at his shoulder as another pulled at his boot. Help! He yelled at the top of his lungs. Help! He raised his hands. I'm sorry, please. <laughs> but when his hands were in the air, another one bit off two of his fingers. He shrieked as he looked at his missing fingers in horror. He clawed at the dirt with his mangled hand, trying desperately to get away, but the hogs pulled him back in, continuing to tear at his flesh. A short distance away, the tire on his tipped over wheelchair spun slowly as his screams for help filled the afternoon air. On the back of his headrest, a sticker read, Think a veteran. You've been listening to White Coat Syndrome by Brian Asbury. A good reminder that greed will make a man blind. Pigs will eat anything, you know, but they especially love just desserts. A little about the author. Brian Asbury is from Pueblo, Colorado. Many of the stories he writes are just demented versions of people that he's either known or had encounters with over the years. When he was growing up, he was heavily inspired by Stephen King, The Twilight Zone, and Tales from the Crypt, and looks to bring back good storytelling and horror again. Another one of his stories, The Chair in the Closet, has been featured on Scary Stories Told in the Dark. He'll also be publishing a short story collection in the future. He wants to thank his girlfriend Amber and all the friends and family that have believed in him. And I'll go ahead and tell you, Brian, that I really enjoyed your story. Keep it up, friend. I think you're on to something. And while you're at it, please remember to stop by our Apple Podcast page or wherever else you listen to your favorite podcasts and subscribe. The charts are based on subscriptions, not listens, by the way. So feel free to accidentally subscribe as many times as you want. I won't tell anyone, I promise. And if you feel like spreading the word and helping old Drew Blood out and convincing a friend or two to subscribe to my podcast, that would help me out greatly, and I'd really appreciate it. To hear a premium ad-free edition of tonight's and all our other podcast episodes, visit simplyscarypodcast.com today and click the patrons link in the upper menu. You'll find yourself at ChillinTalesForDarkNights.com, where you can become a patron for as little as $5 a month and get access to our entire audio archive dating back to 2012. 
including past episodes of this program and all our other shows, and hundreds of standalone releases, all of them ad-free and available to download or stream. If you happen to use Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or YouTube, you can follow and subscribe to Chillin' Tales for Dark Nights there, where you'll get all our latest updates and new releases and have the chance to interact with us each and every week. You'll find me personally on Facebook and Instagram, and sometimes Twitter. Sometimes. And remember, we're accepting submissions. If you've got a story or two you'd like to be featured on this show, send it to drewbloodhorror at gmail.com. If selected, you'll get the full treatment. Well, I'm afraid this is where we part ways, friend. At least till next week. So grab a drink for the road if you like, but be careful what you wish for. Fanciful ideas don't always work out the way you want them to. I'd like to recognize a few of our YouTube crew. Otis Rogers. What's up, O-Dog? London Walker. And Joe Robb. I'm really digging the comments and support, y'all. Thank you. So Otis Rogers, London Walker, and Joe Robb. May the wind be at your back and made a road rise up to meet you. Keep your wheels out of the hog pen and go fuck yourselves. <laughs> Good night, y'all. See you next week. Chilling Tales for Dark Nights.